Preston, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Fascinating speech this morning. Thank you. So, in layman's terms, what is the current landscape of the misunderstanding of nuclear energy? Well, one, uh, the industry did a great deal through the years of improving public perception. And uh, before Fukushima, uh, the public perception was on the rise. And uh, we in the industry were introducing the nuclear renaissance. So we were, we were quite excited about the next phase of nuclear plant development and, uh, and generation mix. Well, obviously, after Fukushima happened, um, all utilities had to, I'm going to say, go uh, to a pause position and reevaluate their safety systems and making sure the defense in depth is commensurate with almost any postulated or unpostulated uh, event. And from that, um, a lot of really quality outcome uh, solutions were rendered that uh, heretofore were really not on the radar screen. And that much more uh, in terms of flexibility. Um, matter of fact, I used to use a term called it has to be farmer smart. I mean, this isn't about uh, 10 to the minus 6 uh, probability of events. This is about when everything fails, how are you going to still do what you have to do? And once you start thinking that way and not getting trapped in the, the numerical probabilities of, of events, you start to think there are really a lot of robust solutions that you can roll out as long as it's flexible, deployable. And so things like quick connect uh, hoses, quick connect power cords, uh, easily transportable emergency diesel generators, uh, flanges hooked up, ready to go for exterior uh, pumping capability. All these little techniques aren't all that difficult. They're really kind of simple and straightforward. But before it was all about everything was safety related and defense in depth and had to meet real heavy regulatory rigor, which is appropriate. But the best regulation in the world might not still capture this one event that nobody had ever thought would happen. And that is the one you have to be ready for today. And I think the industry has done a great job of getting there, but a very poor job of explaining to the public what's actually happened to, uh, to get that confidence. Which leads us quite succinctly on to public policy and the, the way that the industry conventionally has engaged with the stakeholders. What do you think is the best way to move forward with that? Well, there are some things, uh, one I, I personally know a, a little bit about, but I thought was a great example, was at the Bruce Power in Ontario, uh, Bring It Home, and uh, where uh, Duncan and his team had a full-scale event, if you will, a postulated uh, uh, catastrophe, and they did things like had debris in the road where they had to get caterpillars to actually move things out of the way so they could get uh, emergency diesels in place or fire pumpers in place. But they also invited the public to, to see it, to be part of it, and kind of experience that if you had the big event, here's how that station will unfold corrective actions that to a layman would go, that makes sense. I think that'll work. Now I see how that can actually happen. And it takes it out of the peer engineer uh, sitting up there trying to explain 10 to the minus 6 to some uh, uh, typical um, person around and about. So anyway, it's those types of things. And I do think crafted messages. I mean, where you really talk to a person, you're not talking to another scientist, physicist, or engineer, is a part that we've always done poorly. And, uh, and so in the presentation even today, you saw my little graph of what we thought was a very simplified uh, explanation of what a millisievert is really equal to in harmful effects. Yet when you step back and look at it, it's really a complex series of decimal points and numbers and terms that nobody really knows what they mean. And that's part of the disease we have. So how do you think the industry will make that more accessible? Well, I do think, uh, like anything, where there's a need uh, so things like we would mentioned uh, climate change effects. Uh, that is a motivator. So I know there's a great deal of energy around wind and solar and those technologies are maturing. I know there's substantial uh, work on batteries and storage capabilities. Those are the future. Uh, but you still have today. And uh, I don't believe there's much patience for continuing to, I want to say, cause climate change through carbon emissions that uh, is going to be palatable. Well, this is the window of opportunity for nuclear because we're clearly a low carbon emitter. If it wasn't for sample runs on diesel, generally it would be a zero carbon emitter. But it's extremely, extremely low. This is our window of opportunity. And with the convincing argument 
around these modifications to already superior designed units as a safe uh, vehicle to get the power without producing the carbon is an excellent window of opportunity, I think, to uh, pounce on. What does the future hold for you and the can-do reactor? We think we're extremely well situated for the recycle part. So, you know, kind of environmental is in our blood if you think about it. So most countries have substantial concerns of what happens to spent fuel once it goes through the traditional light water reactor reactors. And for us, we've looked at that and said, well, because we do use heavy water, it's a, it's, it essentially is a vehicle to increase efficiency because of the high utilization of the neutron that heavy water uh, effectively uh, occurs. Because of that, we're situated well to clean up the spent fuel. So we're talking with one, our own design group, but also with key fuel suppliers, key, key fuel reprocessing uh, companies, and working with them, say how can we build the better back-end fuel bundle and build the reactor that's most efficient at burning that. And so we've come up with the advanced fuel can-do reactor, or an AFCR design, that uh, we're currently even working with the Chinese for potential utilization in their footprint as a way to take the spent fuel out of a light water reactor, reprocess it, and then reburn it into an AFCR uh, vehicle. We're also right here where we're sitting in the UK. Um, we're actively participating with two other vendors to provide a solution to deal with a large stockpile of plutonium which is another long-lived, if you know, uh, nuclide that uh, really is beneficially affected by burning it again in a heavy water reactor like our CANMOX design and essentially reducing the total Curie content of long actinides and uh, being able to handle it much better. So we're, we believe we have an excellent solution to dealing with that thorny problem. And it, if you step back and look at it, what are we talking about? We're talking about the back-end fuel cycle and having a technology that's extremely well suited to deal with that. And uh, also complementary to the big units of the pressurized water reactors and the boiling water reactors to handle big base load units, yet have a way to deal with the back-end coming out of those plants. Uh, how's the symposium been for you? Well, it's good. Obviously, our business thrives on interconnection, right? So when you come here, uh, the majority of the energy spent is reconnecting with acquaintances, finding out the new technologies, and finding out who the new players are, um, offering up what you do. So the connectivity is big, to, so that when you leave, you go back to your own team and say, look, let's reach out to this company, because they're working on this issue. I One, I think they could maybe use part of our product, but two, we ought to get in a little bit, because if we were to marry our product with their product, we may have something the client could really use. So th it, these things in large part are about connectivity with the people in the business from a supplier, from the vendor, and from the client standpoint. And uh, we've been coming here for years. We've been a member of WNA for over 20 years. And uh, our future is still tied to, uh, to the, the, this conference and what we try to accomplish here. And what would you say the World Nuclear Association's part to play in all of this is? Um, well, like some other big conferences, but this handles the Europe uh, quite effectively. It really is creating the forum to bring these players to bear. And also topic, like I took today a little bit of a chance, but I wanted to go after a little bit of how we as engineers and physicists and uh, nuclear operators uh, behave sometimes in the public. And uh, this is the forum, right? This is the ability where your constituents are the CEOs and CNOs and key suppliers. These are the decision makers uh, in the business. And so being able to touch them and share with them your thoughts, if nothing else, it provokes um, uh, conversation around the water cooler, if not actual uh, some level of wisdom uh, being uh, nurtured through it all. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate thank the you opportunity. For your time. Good.